by now you probably have logged into your email or your social media or online bank account and you've been prompted to create a second step to verify your identity. It's called two-factor authentication. And it's an extra layer of security that more and more companies are using to protect customer accounts. But it turns out hackers have already figured out a way to bypass that feature. Andrea Day explains. Username password, and now for extra security, two-factor authentication. Typically a special code sent to your smartphone. Enter it in and you're good to go, right? Just by enabling two-factor authentication, you can't relax. Meet Kevin Mitnick, once one of the FBI's most wanted hackers. He's now the chief hacking officer at cybersecurity firm No Before. Even though you're using two-factor authentication, a smart attacker could get access to your account. It could open up your personal accounts or business files to criminals. And here's the scary part. The tool to actually pull these attacks off has been made public. So any 13 year old could download the tool and actually carry out these attacks. No before CEO Stu Showerman. It's happening as we speak. He says the attack banks on social engineering. That's where hackers take advantage of human behavior to get you to do something like click on a link. Social engineering, if you do it right, can be used to get into almost anything. And in this case, even your two-factor authentication won't keep them out. Here's how it works. Mitnick says the bad guys start by sending you a phony email that looks like the real deal. It's called phishing. In this demo, the fake email is from LinkedIn, saying a fan wants to connect. He clicks the link and is directed to the real LinkedIn page. Now, LinkedIn basically brought up a message that I have to enter my two-factor code. The code is sent to his device. Ah, now I got the message. He enters the code. And now I'm logged in. But now the bad guys can log in too. Here's how. Before he was directed to LinkedIn, it secretly went through the hacker's server, where it left what's called a cookie. That's a bunch of info about Mitnick, like his username and password, and all hackers need to get in. And now when I hit refresh, I'm going to be magically logged into the victim's account without needing a password, their username, or even their two-factor code. His advice? Learn how to spot those phony emails and never click on a link unless you're 100% sure. It's not LinkedIn that's vulnerable, it's the actual user. It's a security flaw with the human. Take a close look at our demo. The email came from a fake domain, not LinkedIn, but llnked.com. Which people initially might not even realize. LinkedIn tells us, quote, we take these types of reports very seriously and have a number of technical measures in place to protect our members. When we detect this type of activity, we work to quickly remove it and prevent future reoccurrences. We strongly encourage members to report any messages or postings they believe are scams. Companies like Google and others now have tools to try and prevent it. It's called a security key, and here's how it works. Director of Product Management, Mark Risher. The security key stores its own password and requires the site to prove that it's legitimate before releasing that password and getting you signed in. And while they've made strides, he says, there are still open areas. It's not ubiquitous by a long shot, but we're encouraged to see more and more sites, more and more apps, and also more and more hardware manufacturers come online and make these products. And the solutions may be one step closer, but the pros say that you still need to play a role and pay close attention to everything you enter, even with that special code. For a Nightly Business Report, I'm Andrea Day.